Today we are in Turin, a small city in the north of Italy, most famous for being the home of Fiat, a car company making some of the most iconic car designs in history. And up until a certain time they used to be producing the cars here in Turin or in Italy in general. Then they moved their production in Asia or South America, leaving a big void in the city, which left space for the creative uh, industry to grow. And that's very much why we're here today, to meet some of the most exciting and creative micro-recycling organizations in Italy. Hey man! Buongiorno! <laughs> <laughs> Ciao! Okay, so here we are with Alessandro from uh, It's Made and Plastids. Today we're gonna have a look into their operations here. Absolutely mind-blowing. We're gonna see how they took the sheet press to the whole next level. They make three meters by two uh, sheets and on top of that they also make incredible furniture and interior design with that. So can't wait for this episode, let's just go right into it. Hi to everyone, I'm Alessandro, I'm the co-founder of It's Made and Plastics. This is our workspace and office. It's a kind of weird place because in this area we design. So we work on wood and metal and two years ago we dive inside plastic, founding plastics. Follow me. Here, material library, a CNC, milling machine, uh, wood samples and metal sample. Here again is our office. There was our metal woodworking area. Now there is our showroom, research and development area and office. Welcome to Plastics. So our business and, and our product is based on sheets, panel, as you want to call it. To and a half meter by 1 and 25 centimeters. These products are made by HDPE, but we also focus on polystyrene and we test and develop many other polymers. In Italy, there is a really, really strong regulation about waste. We don't have any permission to touch and manage waste. We buy end of waste, so there are many companies who collect, wash, smash, and shred plastic, we buy this kind of material that actually is no more a waste. Is in fact there is a the legal term of it is end of waste. During this washing and cleaning and selection of plastic, this comes from the last process, the waste of the waste. Actually, this is the real end of the cycle is a plastic mix, polyolefine mix, and sometimes the smell is really, really, really disgusting. In this area, there is not only the showroom, but also research and development area. They are helping us to develop new product, uh, testing polymers, uh, testing temperature, pressure, and so on. Sometimes uh, we shred plastic uh, with this machine that actually we use it uh, during workshop and experiences with kids uh, and adult. We also have this two little machine, 40 by 40 centimeters, only for testing. Hot press and cold press, cooling press. We use this machine in order to test temperature, pressure. Thanks to this uh, experiment, we transfer the result in the huge uh, press uh, machine. Thanks to the R&D, we develop uh, many, many transformation, melting uh, and testing from uh, different uh, polymers, uh, thickness, uh, transparencies. For example, this is a TPU, thermoplastic polyurethane, that actually it's a elastomer. So it was elastic and still now it's uh, elastic. This is a five millimeters panel. Our thickness product passed from five millimeters to 40 millimeters. In the middle, there are the other thickness. Some example now. Polystyrene from Ferrero Rocher. S-A-N, sun. It comes from uh, traffic lights uh, or uh, water jar. Extremely transparent polystyrene from uh, pen or uh, from fridge shelf. This is uh, PMMA polymetacrylate. Polymetacrylate from uh, bikes, lights, but also from uh, rear car lights, acetate from glasses. We shred DVD or CD-ROM and we recycle that. 
Actually, CD-ROM or DVD are made from uh, polycarbonate, so it's a thermoplastic polymer, so is it possible to recycle that? And because Italy is also a country of wine, so we recycle corks. That actually is made by LDPE, so it's possible to shred or melt as a whole. Of course, tons of toys. Unfortunately, we don't only succeeded, but also failed. So welcome to the Epic Fail Gallery. We tested pile from sweater, so textile from PET recycle. Not so melted, too much heated and uh, th this is the best outcome that we made. So it's possible to recycle textile and PET and whatever, but uh, it takes uh, hours of research and development. Another test comes from PLA that actually is really, really easy to recycle. This material comes from sugar or starch, so it's completely vegetable material and compostable, but there is a problem. It starts to melt at uh, 46 degrees Celsius. Because it's a, an organic material, it's also possible to put inside other organic and vegetable or whatever material that is possible to compost. With this material, it's possible to make uh, thin sheets or also thicker. In this area, we also test uh, different techniques of bending, uh, gluing, uh, finishing. This is a meter joint with a reversible uh, hardware. Here inside there is a hardware who is possible to connect uh, two pieces. Because it's reversible, there is no glue, it's possible to disassemble the piece and recycle again. Again, in terms of testing, uh, because we made this kind of sheets uh, with a flat uh, metal sheets, uh, it's possible also use a other different uh, texture in order to have this result. We tasted corrugated uh, sheets that from this we had that. And here we have uh, different type of bending, uh, melting, uh, shaping. When the material is uh, still warm, uh, is malleable and uh, is possible to have different kind of shapes. Some polymers uh, are bending by themselves uh, through gravity. So this is the, the wrong uh, way to store uh, HDPE. But for the same reason, it's possible to cold bend HDPE. So without any heat, it's possible to bend it. Italy, country of uh, saints, uh, wine, but also coffee. This uh, table is, comes from coffee pots. It's a material impossible to recycle. Actually, it's made by aluminum cup and uh, the pod is made by LDP. Actually, it's possible to do it uh, one by one peeling. In an industrial way, it's impossible to recycle. So we shred everything together and we make this. As I said, Plastits has a mother or a father. The name is It's Made. Plastits customer is It's Made. We use our plastic in our furniture and interior design. Now I'm showing you our workspace. Here there is metal workshop, woodworking, assembly area, our spray booth or vacuum wall, CNC milli machine. Okay, so I just convinced Alessandro to show me the big sheet press. It's actually in a workshop a few meters away. However, I won't be able to film in there because it cost them a lot of money to develop this and they prefer us not to film. Uh, however, I hope I can show you some of the behind the scene over there. All right, everyone, this is the guy, this is the guy that developed the big sheet press to make three meter by 150 that all of you want to get your hands on. Unfortunately, it took them tons of money to develop, so it's not possible to show you what I'm seeing in front of me. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> okay, I almost forgot one of the most important things that I usually share on this channel, which is the positive impact that we are having with our projects. So I'm gonna ask you a few questions about your impact here with plastics. 
Starting, of course, with the amount of plastic that you recycled. Uh, how much plastic you recycled last year? Last year, it was uh, 50 tons, and total amount of uh, plastic, uh, including this year, is uh, 100 tons. And also, the, the revenue, if you are going to ask him that. <laughs> that was the next question. <laughs> Quite comparable. I mean, uh, 50 tons recycle, 50,000 k euros uh, of income, and uh, the total amount uh, of uh, our income is now 100,000 euros. Uh, so it's comparable. More we recycle, more the income is coming. Pretty amazing numbers. And also, I'm always kind of curious about the social impact as well. How many people work here? There's also a bunch of volunteers. Could you expand a bit on that? We are uh, one company and three partner, and we have uh, four employees. One of them is a social disadvantaged people. And I forgot something really, really important, that our electricity comes 100% from renewable resources. And the Cypress uses quite a bit of electricity, so it's kind of nice. Anyway, I hope you can see how uh, this sort of precious plastic business has quite a significant impact, positive impact on this plant. So back to the interview now. Okay, so here we are <laughs> with Alessandro, having a few questions to learn more about plastics on one of the best tables that I've been sitting ever. Thank you. Because it looks beautiful <laughs> and because it's got a good story behind. Okay, Alessandro, why don't you tell me a little bit about the uh, origin of plastics and how you started and how Precious Plastic was kind of a, a starting point for you guys. The inspiration was Precious Plastic. But <laughs> Because I studied architecture, I'm an architect and I am passionate in design and also I am extremely curious, I start to watch videos of vacuums and precious plastic uh, and so I said why to don't do it here now in Italy because uh, plastic is a problem. We started from uh, B2, the second version, precious plastic second version, uh, we made a shredder, the compressor and injection. After developing uh, machines and testing and whatever we realize uh, an issue sustainability, economic sustainability. Yes, I can definitely relate to that. And I guess that's when you guys have sort of developed the machine further into more industrial, large scale recycling machines, correct? Yes. Two years ago, we founded our startup. We founded Plastics. First step, we industrialize the process and we develop our machine based on the knowledge shared from precious plastic. We decided to develop machine, this machine on the standard wood sheets, 250 by 125. And these sheets look incredible. My goodness, I'm touching these things and I'm completely blown away. Few little issues here and there, but generally the quality is really top top, top notch. You were also saying your clients are kind of very demanding. An interesting fact that you were sharing with us is that to sell a sheet is one thing, but to sell a table is a whole other thing. So it's much easier to ask a bunch of money for a table rather than the sheet. And that's when you having this workshop right here next, next door, it kind of enables you to sort of access other markets. Yes, the product are quite expensive. It's a extremely energy consuming process uh, is a startup uh, actually this plastic is exp expensive even if it's a recycle we buy it and it's expensive uh, so it's cost cost and cost that uh, translate in price in terms of price is perceived uh, extremely expensive but it's much easier to sell a furniture a piece of furniture compared to the raw material Okay, so what, what kind of uh, products do you, you actually make with these sheets? Thanks to made, the main application is based on furniture, but also it's possible to make uh, accessories like uh, jewels or glasses. And in another and more bigger scale, interior design, so shops, offices, and any kind of uh, space. But the real question here is, how much money do you need to open source your machine? Manuel, prohibito, lo so se lo fai
<laughs> terrible thing to do. But of course, I mean, this is touching on a very important point. I mean, you know, we, Fresh Plastic, our value is in open sourcing technology. Of course, plastics has a whole other business model, which makes it kind of difficult for you to, to be able to, to share um, the machine that you developed free and open source. And I think we fully understand that. And we are actually very happy that you are pushing forward the technology and you know, somehow at some point, we'll get there as well. We'll open source a larger sheet press so that you know, more people can. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> this being said, Alessandro, I really want to thank you for your time. <laughs> thank you for the incredible work and inspiration that you provide to the world the amount of plastic that you recycle. Hopefully we see you in a few years with you know, an even larger workspace, even larger machine, even larger impact. And I'll see everyone in the next video. Ciao! Ciao!